Okay, so I'm going to open up two images here. I'm going to need a backdrop image and a butterfly image. This is my butterfly. So for the first part of this, um, we're going to build this Photoshop document. So they're going to use the magic wand tool here to select. Again, I'll uh, adjust my tolerance there. Go with the three point. Let's see what we can get. Very good. Make sure again, go around, click on all the excess gray area there. Doing pretty good there. Click up in there again. Um, cleaner you do this, the better. All right, everything looks good. Now the it's up right there. Okay, so the key here again is to use the plus option on your selection. That would be up here in the option bar, add to selection when you're clicking there. So now that the selection is made and I'm, I'm happy with the overall selection there, I do have to realize that it's, it's the butterfly I want, not the white area. So to make sure that the what's selected is actually the butterfly itself, I have to invert the selection. So I'll go up to select inverse or shift command I, that flips it around. And now at the uh, that I can edit, I can copy it. Once it's selected there, flip over to the uh, other image and image here, edit, paste, and there it is. Now if I go to my move tool here, I can move butterfly around but make sure again always always name your layers as you go I'm gonna go ahead and close this out here the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna save this as a Photoshop document because I'm gonna be building on it for the next couple of assignments so I'm going to go ahead and move that into there and again name it uh, properly so last name, Web 114, this is assignment three, and this is image five. Well, in this case, I'm just gonna leave it at zero because I'm, again, I'm gonna be building on it. So I'm just gonna leave it right here in my work and I'll just make sure it's a Photoshop document and save. Okay, cool, all, all is good. Now that's for my use, but for the assignment use, I need to file, save, export here, save for web. Once, make sure it's JPEG low, save, and then direct it to go into my assignment folder here. And just, in this case, I can just click on that and change that to a five and click save and we're all good. So that's, so that's uh, making a selection, copying it to the pasteboard and pasting it into another file and making sure that you've named your layer appropriately. Next we're gonna do is, uh, the next one is, where you take another butterfly. I'll just go ahead and open up blue here. And we make a selection of this one. Although in this case, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a layer out of this as from the background. We're gonna create it as an independent layer. So if I double click on the background, I can name it, rename it there, click okay. Now it is a layer on its own. So what I can do here is if I do the very same thing with the, uh, get the selection tool there of the magic wand, click on that. Again, make sure it's on plus. I can collect uh, more of this uh, gray matter there. Once I've got that done, because it's a layer on its own, I can actually hit the delete button on the keyboard, hit delete, and my background now will disappear. And then select deselect to deselect the item here. I'm gonna get my move tool here. So now I've got a free floating layer that's named blue. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna drag this into here. I can just do that by simply dragging it over and dropping it into the picture. Watch, notice how it now it's brought it in and it's got the name already there and it's already, I can move it around as I will. I'll move it over to there. And I can close this, and I don't need that anymore, so I'll just go ahead and close that out. I'm going to save this, uh, make sure that I have a copy of that as a Photoshop document, and then I'm going to save export, save for web, 
a copy for my assignment, which again would be number six. Save. Okay, for seven, I need two more elements, the last butterfly and the painted wall. So I'll grab those and open up those in Photoshop. And I'll do the, I can do the very same thing with this butterfly here. Again, rename it. And I can select the white areas there, hit delete, and then deselect. So now something there, it's all selected. And again, it's a free flowing method. Now, another thing you can do with, uh, you don't necessarily, once, if that, if the layer, you can actually grab the layer itself in the layer panel and pull that one over and drop that right into your design too. So, and again, it's nicely pre-named, so don't save. Now I got my yellow, got my blue, I got my red. Now the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in this painted wall. Now one thing about um, Photoshop, you don't necessarily have to select anything. You can actually, if, in this case, I want everything in this photograph. And this image right here, everything. So I can actually grab that and drop it right in there. Notice I didn't select anything. I just used the move tool and I just drugged the whole thing right in there. Dropped it in. It doesn't have a name now, so I better name it wall. And I also should probably consider moving it out of the way of all these wonderful butterflies. So to do that in the layer panel, if I click hold and drag, I can drag that wall layer right down and notice where that bold the double line there occurs click on that and now it's behind my other butterflies so each butterfly if I select the layer representing layer red there in that case I can move red over a little bit here and maybe flutter blue up there now my butterflies aren't necessarily looking all that exciting um, I could edit free transform here or Command T, and I get little these little bars here. If I hover close to them, very much like an Illustrator, I can um, maneuver them around like that. Double click on that. I can do the same thing with blue. Edit free transform. Maybe have that one float off that way. And with red here, uh, one more time. Edit free transform, and again. Uh, some up, maybe like, eh, maybe not at all. In fact, maybe I can also, if I hold down the shift key and grab the corner, I can shrink them down a little bit so maybe all of them fits in the picture or at least that much. Then we'll leave that one there. Because it'll be a little composition work. Better save this just because I should, because my little indicator there is telling me that I need to. Okay, so now we're going to add a a mask onto this wall here and create a nice fade. So I'm going to do is here, I'm going to click on the wall and down here in the uh, layer panel there is what's the mask option. We'll click on that, add layer mask, and I get this little white section right here which is telling me that there's a mask there. Now white indicates that all is good, you can see all the way through it. It's what, painting in black is when you start to hide things. Now in this case, we're going to put a nice little gradient on this, so this, this board here kind of fades into or considering out of the picture. In this case, we used a gradient tool. You click on that, and once you click on that, in the option bar, you will get options of gradients. Now choose the black to white, which is the one you can um, best suited for this adventure. And where you want the gradient to start is where you click on the picture and then go across. Now, if you hold down the shift key, it will nice, make a nice horizontal gradient, nice and clean, and release the grid. And you will see now that the, um, the wall is slightly fading. If you don't like that, if you want to change it, again, you can do the hold down. You can just paint again, and that will add right to that other one. You can see now it's there. Now this, uh, again, this if I get my move tool here, I can take this, uh, click on the mask there, and move the mask itself in the picture. I can also move the, the blue box area there too, or click it to hold it, 
um, with the anchor in between, and then everything will move together. So I'll just do that like that. And I can also apply one of these to any one of these other items here. If I wanted to make it right to the, uh, straight to the butterfly itself, I can right click on the thumbnail and get select pixels, which will now select the pixels of the butterfly that are evident there. Now, once that selection is made, I can then click on a mask and it will create a mask. Note now that the mask now is showing the butterfly through there. But if I actually move that mask, you'll see less of the butterfly. I'm going to go back to history and make sure that my mask wasn't moved there. So I will go back to that point. I will, however, link it back together again. And I'm, what I'm going to do here is, again, I can use the uh, a paintbrush, actually, here, and paint with some black. I'm going to uh, set the opacity here a little lower at the top in the option bar there, a little down there, and then actually maybe increase the size of this by a lot more. Maybe even bigger than that. And then I can paint like right around the butterfly there. And if for any reason you don't, you took too much away, you can actually switch from black to paint to white. So down in the toolbar, if you click on that switch tool there, it'll switch to white. And the white there will essentially paint it back in again. Now actually you're not losing any pixels. All you're doing is painting on the mask area. Now make sure again that the mask area is select a sub layer there by the little corners on the sub layer there so that i'm going to go ahead and get my move to a uh, file save for your own archive use and again this export save for web as seven okay What's also required for 7 is a screenshot of your Layers panel. To do that in, on a Mac, if you hold down Command-Shift-4, you'll see that your, your cursor there has changed to a crosshairs. Then if you hold, click, and drag, select what you want to be screenshot there, click, and then release. Hear that little... Somewhere on your... Oh, there it is will be a screenshot. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to diminish this for a minute. I'm going to click on the yellow to hide that for a second. And go over here to my assignment and open up assignment 7 in Photoshop. And I'm going to expand the size of the canvas, image canvas. I'm just going to uh, add a uh, I'll just add 2, 000, 200 more to the side there. So it's going to come to there, and then I'm going to change that to white. And click OK, and there I should now expand. I should have a little area of white there. I'm going to go to my screenshot and open with Photoshop. And get my move tool here. Click, hold, and drag it right into my item there. And, I, and obviously, I need more space here. So I'm going to increase the size of my canvas. By a lot more, so uh, maybe I make it 1500 all the way across. Click OK, and there's my layers panel. So I'll drop that right in there like that. File, export, save for web, save, and then I'm going to overwrite seven here. Click seven, save, yes, I want to replace it, and now my layers panel with everything written or Name and everything properly in there. Now close that out and let that go. Okay, so open up my last bit here for assignment seven. Last one is to use, let's see, it would be step number eight there, is to clone the bottle. So I'm going to open up the bottle in Photoshop. And what the book is asking you to do is take your clone tool, which looks like the rubber stamp, which is right here in your um, layer tool panel, clone. And with the bottle JPEG clicked on, go to Window, you will find your clone source panel. You click on that, and your clone source panel should appear somewhere. I'm going to 
click and hold and drag it over here to where I'm working. Move that over so we can see. And what you end up with is the option of a clone, creating a clone source. A couple things you want to do first of all, notice that the, your, your um, you have a uh, what looks like a similar to a brush tool. I'm going to increase the size of that to like 70 there, or 71. That's appropriate. Okay, I'm going to uh, then I'm going to click on that to move it. Um, I'm going to create a source. What I'm going to do here is with the clone tool, I'm going to click on the option key on the keyboard, which will change the cursor, and then I'm going to click with the mouse. Once I do that, and then release the option key, if I move the mouse around, you'll see now that the, there's a an element there. Now, maybe a better way to see that would be to take a, I'm going to re, retake a sample. So I'm going to take an option right here where the paper occurs. So you can really, now you can see that, see that there's a, what's going to do is clone. Now what I'm going to do back here then is I'm going to go over, oh, I'm going to change the angle. Here in the clone source, I'm going to actually change the angle of the um, the direction there. We'll see what happens. I'm going to go back to my composition. I'm going to create a new layer. I'll put a. I'm going to go down to the layers panel here and click on the layers new layers icon and layer one. I'm going to change that to bottle. Make sure it's highlighted. And then I'm just going to start painting. And just like magic. My bottle will appear. So, that's the clone source tool. I'm going to go ahead and file export save for web. Save that and change that seven to an eight. And I'll close that out. And I'm gonna go ahead and file save for my own reference for that one and then close that out. And that, my friends, is the end of that. So